so welcome everyone to this uh, session about language pack management on dnnconnect.org. Uh, my name is Jan Bermer and I will be hol holding this presentation with, uh, together with Ernst Peter. Uh, maybe you will know him, I'm not sure. I'm quite new to, uh, to DNN so, uh, or to this event, so uh, I hope you can, hope, I hope can explain something about the language pack uh, manager on, uh, on DNN. Um, so, special thanks to our sponsors in this event, of course. Uh, I'll talk about, um, what I'll talk about in this session is uh, uh, what you can find on the dnnconnect.org uh, website uh, in terms of language packs and uh, different languages, modules, etc. you can find there. Um, where you can find a, a specific language you're looking for for a, a module you're working with. Um, I'll give a, a short demo on uh, how to enhance or uh, improve on translations uh, using this language uh, pack manager. Um, and also I will show you how to add uh, new modules or new pack, language packs for modules to the, to the database of, or on the, on the website itself. And I will tell you a little bit about uh, how the language pack module that is used on the dnnconnect.org website can help you create uh, translations quickly and easily. So, um, what do we want you to know and do afterwards, after this presentation? Uh, I want you to start downloading your favorite uh, language packs for all your favorite modules, of course, um, so that you will have um, you know, websites with uh, the, the local language for the, for the module available. Um, if you have any modules yourself that you made or are using and you have translations ready, you can upload these and add them to the existing uh, database. Um, and if you have uh, some extra time or you're feeling particularly passionate, you can, uh, you can also work on um, modules that are not yet fully translated and help create a, a more um, a more complete translation for these uh, modules. Uh, and and Spate will talk a little bit about uh, assisting with the development of this uh, language pack manager because it's uh, it's been around for uh, for a few years now and uh, there, there are some things that can be improved on it and uh, and Spate will uh, tell you more about this. So why do we need language pack management? Why is it important? Um, I, everyone knows, of course, that the uh, DNN um, installation, you can just go to admin languages and you can translate the designated label uh, language you want to translate and it works. But it's not the most efficient way if you want to translate a whole module or more than that. So how would you normally uh, translate a, uh, a static text uh, using, you would copy the, the ResX file and make like a, a localized version of it. So from like um, uh, NL, you make a copy and it will become NL, NL or EN, GB or EN, US, etc. Uh, and as I said, in DNN, you can already make translations, log in as a host and Go to admin languages and then fill in your uh, click on the on this on the system host or site, usually site because you want to translate on portal level and not higher than that. Um, and then you can translate within the modules you want to, but it's not a very efficient way to do this. <coughs> so. What is the disadvantage of uh, the standard way to translate texts in DNN? First of all, you have to have a website ready with uh, the modules installed that you want to translate, um, either local or somewhere online, but it has to be an installation. Um, second, um, the completeness of the translation is not always there. You just translate what you need at that moment and then the rest, you. You might never do it, and then maybe, yeah. So, on this, on the on the website, you can make full packs and have 100% translation for the, the language you want to. Uh, and other people can help you, of course. 
And when there's a new version of a module, maybe some texts are altered or uh, uh, there are new texts available, new labels that have to be translated. And it's not very easily easy to see in, in DNN itself uh, what is changed and what is added. Uh, so you have to really look for it when you want to translate new texts. Uh, and there's no easy way to share the translation you made in your own local installation, so not so good. <laughs> so uh, we, we say there is a better solution available, uh, which is the Language Pack Manager uh, module, which is installed on dnnconnect.org. And I'll tell you why. So why do you need to know about this LP? A language pack manager module. Um, we think it's a more efficient way to translate large amounts of text. So like if yes, if you have one label and it's a few lines of text, you can use it in, in the DNN installation yourself, that's fine. But once you have to start translating whole modules and it becomes a, a, a big load of work just to translate this whole uh, package and, and this, this module helps you to translate bigger amounts of text. Um, there's also no need to have your local installation or a website uh, where you run these modules. You can just upload a pack, an empty pack with all the labels in there, and uh, you can start translating all the text there. Um, once you've uploaded a pack that's maybe like half translated, other people that are working on the DNN Connect website in the community, they can also help you translate um, to imp or improve translations or or translate for you and make the translation of this module more complete or even add their own language like say there's a English translation, there's a Dutch translation, there's uh, someone from Spain, he, he wants to have a Spanish translation so he starts making a Spanish translation for your, for your module and that way you will get a more broad spectrum of languages available for your module. Um, so obviously translating can be tedious work. Uh, I don't know if there are many people in this room who like to do translations. Uh, so making it more easy and more efficient is always a good thing, of course. Uh, and also, if everyone does their translations in their own installation, everyone will be translating the same text when, if you do it just once on the website, uh, it's already been done, you don't have to do it again. So for... Uh, for users of the of the website, so not per se contributors yet, uh, you can go to this website, it's dnnconnect.org slash community slash translations, and there you will find uh, the, all the modules that have language packs uploaded available. For example, EasyDNN News has some packs on there, uh, Too Sexy Content, Simple Gallery, and on, on there you can also edit the latest translations, the, the newest versions of the, of the module. Uh, and the, the, the second thing you can do is you can upload your own packs of uh, language packs you've already made and upload them to this website so, so that they're available for the community as well. So I'll show you. Yeah. I'll go to uh, community. I think you have to press the escape because it's not sure. Okay. I'll run the... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we are on the dnnconnect.org website. I'll go to translations. Yeah. And here you can see uh, all the different languages that have packs available. So Who's you familiar with this part of the DNet Connect process? I've never seen, seen it yet. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. So it's under community and then translations uh, with a text localization editor. And um, so you can see that. First, it lists all the different languages that are available, and then you can choose one. So, for example, I will choose, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, so I'll choose Netherlands. Uh, 
Let's see. So this is when I'm not logged in yet. Um, and then you can see all these packs, you can download them. Uh, but you cannot edit them yet, so you have to log in to edit them or upload some. But you see or, or here all the, uh, from news articles, there's different uh, components and like some older ones, Ventrian, uh, see Easy Bean and News, Easy Bean and Mailchimp, and over here you have um, full packs of Dean and Forge news articles, Easy Bean and News, and Simple Gallery. But this is not that extensive yet, so it would be nice if uh, if that was uh, if if people will upload more modules themselves as well. Um, so I'll do. Does it contain the, the core language? The core uh, language? Uh, yeah, I will show you in a in a little bit um, because there's, for example, yeah, there's like a base English, and then you have derivatives. Uh, so English okay, GB. If you talk about the core. Language of the core that's yeah. supplied automatically. Oh, I see. For, for DNN. Yeah. DNN. Yeah. If you install DNN, there's Dutch, English, German, Spanish, and French yeah. available as a standard language in the installation. But I think the, it, it does have, for instance, the Ukrainian and the Russian ones. Uh, it does have the, the DNN core uh, language pack. Yeah. The only thing is, since I didn't. Like no one came to this part of the site anymore for uh, for a long time, uh, so it's been neglected for a long time. So they, it's not like the latest version of DMN either. Uh, but it was Sergey who contributed uh, Russian. And, uh, if you go to community translations again to the main page, and you go to look down, and you select Ukraine for your Russian. There's even a Gaelish pack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take a pick. <laughs> Ukraine, it's the middle. This is Russian. Yeah, uh, it is Russian. So there you should see the dot, the top, you see dot, the community edition. 704. Four zero. So that yeah. was the last time we, we worked on this. Yeah. Okay. So there is some. I think that's okay. Hmm? Okay. So as you can see, I'm logged in now. Over here, my name is not Ernst Peter, but uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go back to this uh, translation. Yeah, so that many different languages in Netherlands. A different variation. Yeah. Six yeah. Different so, words. yeah. So, Netherlands, 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 Belgium. Um, some Suriname versions. Uh, right. Yeah. So there's a few there, but as you can see, the French one was very extensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, as I was talking about, uh, as a as a, just a user, you can download these packs, but. When you're logged in uh, with your account on dnnconnect.org, you can also you get an extra icon here. Actually, two extra icons. Um, they're both uh, pencils, but uh, one is for the um, like the NL, NL or NLB or ENGB version, and the other one is for the the base text, so the base language only NL or only EN or only. Um, French FR or something. So that you have a base text and all the other versions of that are derivatives of the base. So if there's a change, you only have to translate the changes for that specific uh, uh, language. So I'll show you, uh, let's see. Let's take two sexy content. It's 5% translated, so there needs to be some work done here. Um, so here you can choose what you want to translate. There's a selection here. You can either pick um, one of these ResX files and just translate the whole ResX files, or you can say, I only want to translate texts that are not translated yet. And that way uh, you just get all the labels that are not yet translated. So I will show you. That's a lot. Uh, it is a lot right now, yeah. but there are some, uh, there might be modules that are 80% translated, and then it's not so much. 
So here you can see you have the, the key and then the original translation or the original value of it. And here you can fill in the translation. Um, what I would suggest is just transfer here with the transfer all. So you get the text here and you just have to translate. This is for normal text is not so important, but sometimes there are special characters in there like uh, greater than, and they have to be translated in uh, with uh, code. So um, ampersand LT or ampersand GT instead of just the the so the character itself. So then now I can just say uh, let's see for example. Close is in Dutch, it's Schluiten, and then uh, I've updated this one text. And I can save it if I want to by applying or OK. I'll do, not do this now because I transfer the text. But, uh, okay, so. so. Yeah, it's just posting all that back to the server. It shouldn't because I canceled it. Okay. Return. Um, so also, let's see. You can also upload your own packs, and I'll show you how. Um, so at the bottom of the page where you see all the languages, there's a upload button, and you just go to a page where you can choose your file that you want to upload, so your language pack. Uh, let's see. I'll go to. Uh, so here I have a uh, resource pack for DNN Twitter feed, uh, and I will try to upload this on the on the site. I click next, and it will show you um, what what the content of the pack is. This one is quite small, so you only see a few lines here. Um, you have to. Confirm uh, which locale, so which language you want to map it to. So, uh, for example, if this was a pack for uh, ENGB, I would have to fill it in here. But usually it fills it in automatically because you're already in this, uh, or it recognizes the, you the locale. Can, you can copy the last three characters and make sure it's just, it stays as a generic one. Yeah. No, exactly. And the username, of course. I don't think. It shows who uploaded the pack, but maybe there's some. No, we keep statistics. Yeah, you keep statistics. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. And then you have to confirm that you actually want to import it as well. So I'll do this. I'll finish. And if we now look under Nederland, Nederland, we should see the Twitter feedback in there. And here you have it, DNN Twitter feed, 98% translated, so only it's quite good. So that's how you upload and edit uh, packs. Um, let's see. So what about uh, if you if there's already a translation for a specific version mm -hmm. and uh, a specific language? Yeah. And I want to add another one. Uh, I may not agree on the translations. Can I do a separate one, like two different versions? Or no. They they overwrite each other. So okay. unless it's a different locale. Then it's possible to upload a different locale, but uh, if yeah, you upload yeah. the same locale, you will override the text that are already there. Yeah. Okay. So if something is, let's say, ninety-eight percent translated, it might not be a good idea to upload your whole pack yourself, mm. because yeah, there will be there will always be disagreements about how to translate some some text, maybe, but then. If you really know for sure it's wrong, then maybe you should uh, rewrite it. But if, if you're not sure and both ways might be correct, then I would suggest just leaving it as it is. So there, there is no supervision about it? Um, if I overwrite something in the translation... In the yeah, if you are a malicious person and, and you want to ruin a pack, you yeah. could, I guess. But no, no. Yeah. You no, yeah, but you're right. Yeah, you can. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe there's, there's much more uh, a difference, uh, yeah. difficulties in translating yeah. uh, than, than, than you expect. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, at one point it, it has to or it should be consistent. So, yeah. uh, and uh, when I think about, uh, say, the, the enter key, mm -hmm. There are at least two or three words in German that are valid translations right. for that yeah. key, and, and everyone knows what it is. Yeah. So it should use the same word in every uh, I agree. And, and text. And, and, and another one could come and say, no, I, I don't like this word, mm -hmm. I, I want the other one. So yeah. it, it simply overrides it. When yeah. Well, maybe there should be some way to, to lock a translation, yeah. or uh, but I think M. Spater will talk about how right. to improve on the, I, I uh, on the module. Because I'm be I, better to, to yeah. have the, the language packs say on Jitha and uh, make pull requests. Yeah. You have, you can have <laughs> them and then bring them mm -hmm. to the because we, we it, it obviously that yeah. Not that, that was totally the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and another, another no, wait, no, wait, wait, I want another question. No, I want to answer that first. Yeah, ah, okay. okay. Right? Yeah. Which is only certain people have access. Yeah. Access to right, right. It's yeah. not, not everyone can go and, and I can't edit a German text. Ah, okay. It's specifically given by whoever manages this module to say, Michael does a ah. German translation. Okay. So you only can upload German packs. Okay, German Austrian. Uh, Austrian. Yeah, for instance, yeah. I, I say, okay, Michael does German Austrian. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian does German. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then you are able to overwrite everything that DE okay. uh, ATM. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, another question. For instance, when I have a module, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and I want to upload the translation in German. And uh, do I have to upload the English version of the resource page as well if the module is not there yet? No. Well, how does it know the original English page? I have a Exactly. The manager of the module has to upload the module first. Yeah. Okay. But if you talk about the language pack, you can upload any type of language pack independent of the module itself. Uh, yes, but the, 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 if you upload the language pack for the Newspeed module, yeah. and the Newspeed module is not yet on okay. the site, not yet known, it will ignore your pack. It will yeah. just go into the bin. Yeah. So that module, then you need to contact whoever is managing the module and say, I would like to do too sexy content. Oh, well, okay, so and then we get it. And, and we get He's it. now using my credentials, and I have yeah. a bit more rights. Yes, because yeah. it allowed me as a manager of the site to do a bit more than the Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what if you have a very large set that you want to want to translate? For example, the DNN core translations. Um, then there's also a Windows application that you can use for translations. Um, so. In this uh, application, there are two options for automatic translations. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't gotten it to work yet. Uh, there's a Google or a Bing, um, Bing translation API that it, that it uses. Um, what I what I noticed is that uh, Bing translation has been migrated to Azure, and this includes like a new API. So, I think. There, there needs to be an update for this, uh, and the same goes for Google. I think they also changed their, the way their API works. So the automatic translation right now is not working, but if there is interest, then, then that's something we should look at probably. Um, you can, uh, I'm not sure it's visible, yeah, I think it's visible, kind of. Um, so you, have, you get uh, these options and you have to fill in your, uh, like an a API key for Google to do automate, automatic translation, your default target locale, so uh, a German or Dutch or English or whatever. Um, and then you can also, uh, if, once, once you've done that, you have to select your local DNN installation on which you do the translations. So once you've uh, 
loaded up your DNN installation in this uh, application, you will get a, a tree view uh, with all the resources that are in your DNN installation. So including um, just DNN translations, but also all the modules that you have installed on your, on your site, on your local site. Uh, for example, uh, you can see uh, from, from DNN Sharp in this example, there's Action Forms and Action Grid. And you can see all the, the ResX files they have and translate them into your own language. Um, once you, if you want to start translating, just simply select one of these ResX files and you get this, um, uh, this layout on the, on the right of the, of the screen. Uh, you get the same, the same ideas on, in the module on the website. You get the key and then the original value and then what you want to translate it into. It's quite easily understandable, it's not hard. Um, and once these APIs work again, you can just uh, click a button, translate all, and it will translate it for you. And then all you have to do is actually check if, if you agree with the translation that Google has made for you and change here and there, maybe improve it a little bit, but that will make it quite easy to translate whole uh, modules at once. So, uh, just a question, is it yeah. possible to search for specific words there? I don't know. Not, not yet. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah. It, it, yeah. What it basically okay. does, it takes this original value and yeah. it sends it to Google yeah. with an API okay. and says, "Bring, give me back the translation yeah. for this particular text. So, um, I mean, if you change the original value to just one word, then I guess yeah. it would work that way, but and, yeah. And the, I mean, the question is when Google, uh, for instance, you have an English word mm -hmm. that has uh, two different Word right. can be trans that has two different meanings. And, yeah. and uh, Google translate it always with the wrong word in the other <laughs> language. Yeah. So it would be nice to have a, a mechanism that could easily uh, search and replace mm. this word. Right. I think um, there, there, there are the beginnings of it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It's because yeah. I talked to Benoit when I was programming mm. this, and he especially to this point. Because if you go to Google Translate itself, you will get an option with a, a drop-down to, yeah. to select an alternate translation, right? Mm -hmm. You can see there's like different translations there. Um, uh, but I think the way Google Translate works, if you use the API, is that it uses the context, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just send one word to Google, it might not send the right translation. But if you, the bigger your text is, the more context is there and the more accurate yeah, yeah. But the translation will be. A lot of the values are only one or two words. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and s sometimes very specific for a website yeah, as well. Yeah. So, but then that's why you have to. Even if you translate automatically, you still have to check, obviously, yeah. if it's yeah. the correct translation. But at least you don't have to type it all out yourself. Yeah. So that's an improvement, I guess. Google has got the habit of suddenly changing their mind and charging for their API. Yeah, they are charging for their API now. They they have a free version uh, up to. 2 million characters per month, I think. And above that, you have to start, uh, you have to get a subscription, and they're like levels. Right. So the more you do translate, the, the more expensive it gets, basically. Binges. Is this, you have to get an Azure subscription, and then they also have some limits. Uh, so it's like, I think you get it, you, you can use it for free up to a certain level. But if you translating like modules every day, I think you will have to get a paid subscription somewhere. Right. Yeah. So okay. next, uh, yeah. Ange Peter will talk about uh, make making improvements. Yeah. While he's switching the phone, I have to tell that this original initiative for the language backpack and the manager was made by Peter, I think about five or six years back. It was an initiative to, uh, let's say, uh, get more localized versions of, of, of modules and languages available. There's much more in the system than you see here. There was an, an option uh, to uh, distribute different languages over different uh, people and then gathering in a sort of repository, getting all the information from the different sites back. Uh, and I found it a shame that it was not used that much. I think you, you called it your hobby horse at some point in time. Uh, uh, but it's a shame because we live in, in Europe and there are a lot of different languages here 
and we do a lot of translations to Dutch but there are at least five or ten other companies in the Netherlands probably doing also kind of, some kind of translation now though I know that some of the countries charge for their translation I think in Germany and in France they has a, as an asset to, to give you a French or a German translation but in the Netherlands at some point in time you said whatever we translate we will make available to others so we're sending zip files back and forth mm -hmm. And then I found uh, this system on dnetconnect.org and I followed some of the discussion in the uh, core team or MVP meetings uh, about Peter. And I said it's a shame that this module on this, this is not used more than it is today. Uh, that's the reason to do the presentation here because this is a European event and people like to know maybe haven't seen it anything of that. And it's, it's really useful. I think we have translated maybe 20 or 25 different modules into Dutch. Some of them 100%, some of them 70%, some of them 20%, and even in our own company, people don't know that the translations exist. So our idea is put it on one side, everybody can profit from the fact that we are doing the translations. And the module is uh, five years old, and I asked Peter, uh, does it still work? And he starts hating it because he wants to do it over again. And my idea was, if it works, don't change it. Uh, uh, um, if, it, if, if you know, leave it there and let's explain a little bit, try to find some other people who are willing to do some of the jobs. So I'll explain a little bit about the module because I'm doing small enhancements over the time. Uh, um, the reason to do that again is to share your translation with other people. Uh, we're looking for people who are willing to donate, maybe three words translated or, or a complete pack translation, but if we gather it and put it in a central system, we, we, we make it. It's a balance between give and take. You will find in the different languages all kinds of modules translated. It's easy, we even picked up ourselves. If we started, for example, with the Easy Day in DNN News, it was translated for 50%, we picked that up. So it's at least a starting point. Uh, um, if you look at the module itself, uh, I think it would be useful if, if we find two or three developers in Europe who are willing to do some code enhancements, not completely rebuilding it, but doing some small enhancements. And if there are people around here who are willing to do some coding, I'm, 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 I can give you something into return. I can help you to use GitHub to do development on being in open source modules. I can learn you if you don't know yet and you do development, uh, what fork, clone, upstream branch, stage commit and pull requests are. And if uh, in pre preparation of this uh, event, uh, there were a number of people say, you gave a presentation, I think two years back, can you repeat that one? So I'm probably going to do that uh, somewhere in the next day or tomorrow, yeah. Um, I've, I've written down some of the questions here, go through it. Standard words, yes, I would like, uh, first of all, do you know that Windows, Microsoft have a standard list of the different languages, what they like as, okay. So if people are discussing, should it be Sluiten of Sluit or, or, or Afbreek, there is, if it could Dutch, there is a, a formal, list of words that Microsoft proposes for all their translations. The sad thing is that DNN doesn't, does have a shared RESX file, but it's not used by all the modules. Every module does the translation himself. Search and replace would help in there. It's not available yet. You talked about the GitHub translation. I can show you. I made a GitHub translation for Dutch. I made a Git ignore. So you can have your local DNN site do the translation and create automatically a pull request that pulls only the translated Dutch words and put it in a GitHub repository. It was only used by me, although I, <laughs> I proposed and, and made some advertisements that before. So I, for me, the difference between a translator and somebody who understands GitHub and pull requests, there's a big difference between the two. Uh, that's the reason why I like this module, Language Pack Manager, because you can, if people who don't know anything about programming or development still can do some simple translation. We could even invite some of our customers who are interested in a particular translation, yeah, a particular uh, module, to do small things. Yeah, yeah. The, the point is, it, it was just the idea. Uh, a great from, idea. From GitHub, yeah. But maybe uh, it would be better to have a propose a better translation. And, okay, and, and, good announcement. Yeah. You yeah. can put it Authorize it or not. And then yeah. the, the one who is uh, responsible say it's okay. It's and you get feedback that. It, yeah. Or we, we Good idea. Know, Good idea. Good idea. Like yeah. Good idea. My idea was in the Netherlands we had some of the complaints. Some of my previous uh, uh, translators used the automatic Google translation to translate complete DNN core. And people 
in the field found some language that was not really DNN-like. Oh, they complained about it. There was a bigger scandal. Even. There was a, there's a guy who claimed he could translate Italian. He got the contract from DNN Corp to translate to Italian. And DNN Corp was like, okay, we got that covered. We got the five languages. We shipped them with the whole platform. People started installing them in Italy. This guy was based in Washington, by the way. People started installing them in Italy, and they're like, this is not Italian. <laughs> and communicating that to Dina Corp. Dina Corp like sweat like what? Yeah. Like, no, this is Google. This is not Italian. No. <laughs> <laughs> Big scandal. The guy was yeah, no, just yeah. kicked him out yeah. for good. Yeah. And, and they got a, a proper Italian right? like, <laughs> you can tell me a story for the right afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The current language is VB.net, developed by Peter. Uh, I think five or six years back, something like that. Yeah. Right, so and I think uh, one or two years later you developed the Windows app, Windows application, that is more efficient if you do local translation and a lot of text elements in there. It's still in VB.net, uh, and we can convert it to C Sharp, if anybody is interested to do the conversion, or listen to that, should we convert it to C Sharp, yes or no? Yes? yes. Okay. It takes some work. Uh, we have been developing modules in VB.net uh, before, but nowadays, I think for the last so six or seven years, it's, it's all C Sharp standard. We should, we should also have a discussion about the strategy of uh, language distribution, I think, it, because it, it hooks into it, like, if we, if we still do, do it in this mechanism, because now that the community is back in charge, yeah. I think certain doors are opening. Yeah. One of the, the one, one of my hobby courses has always been that it should not be a manual process for the end user to install a language pack. It should no. be I am German, both of your thing is translated. Yeah. It does the work for yeah. you. And it shouldn't necessarily so it's, it's, it's an objective, but yeah. don't let let's say a better solution stand in the way no. of a good solution no. for the for the first round. I know all your ideas behind that. I really support that idea of distributing and getting a repository who's having what kind of language available. But it just means adding a web API, yeah. for example, yeah. to the module. Yeah. It's, it's very small structure. The module is intelligent, but not that complicated. Uh, if you look internally, uh, there are only eight different tables available, and most of the tables have to do what can people do, permissions. Uh, something about statistics. Here, talk about partner and partner packs. That's the availability of packs at the other side, not used uh, anymore. Uh, the most important tables, in my view, are objects, text, and translations. That, that's essentially, let's say, the module, the different text elements per text element, and the different translations in the different languages uh, available there. And those tables, and I, mostly I start with looking at the module, looking at the table structure, the data structure. It's really simple. So if you want to fill in and do something in the encoding, the data structure is not that complicated. If you have done something in catalog or something like that, that's more, far more extensive. So it's really not that difficult. For example, you look at translation, very simple, tra a text ID that points to the text element, different locale, the value, one was it modified, and who did the last modification. That's all there is. So the, the structure is rather simple. I made a number of pull a number of issues on the GitHub, all defined as enhancements uh, in here. I solved a few myself in the past couple of weeks because I wanted to do something in there. Uh, I'll go through them a little bit because it gives some idea what we are talking about and it helps and the things that were written down there and the question that came along was interesting as well. First of all, this is the main, main uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, window that you start uh, with. I like to have some introductory text, what people can find in here. Second, I like to have some statistics about the number of languages and the number of modules in there because it would help people to find things and see. It is nice that here is Dutch, Deutsch, Deutschland, German, but is there only one module behind it or 25 modules? Is there so it would be interesting yeah, is to go. Is the core pack behind it? Is the core pack behind it? Uh, yeah, that would help. So it's just displaying and some statistics of data that's available. And I might like to search for a particular module. I have Easy DNN News. Is there a translation in a different, in a particular language available? I have to now drill down, drill down, drill down, and find this particular part. Then you have French, and there are a lot of variations of French. 
Caribbean, Belgium, Burkina Faso, Burundi. Uh, French is used a lot. Uh, there's not so much about Spanish, but I think Spanish are also an enormous amount. I would like to collapse them, so I have a bigger, a quicker overview. Of, so there's not so many difficult items in here, bigger, quicker overview. I would like to have the display number of modules per language, because if French has only one module, this is not that interesting, but there are 25 modules, it would be more interesting to look inside, it gives me some idea. Then you have the translation in here, and uh, uh, Jan uh, displayed, uh, I would like to have uh, a search engine optimization in there, insert the page title and the meta text page title and description, so we can put it into Google, and you will find if you're looking for a particular language in a particular module for DNN, Google will help you to find this page, because it's a public page. If you don't have the edit options available, it's a public page that anybody who can anonymously visit this particular page can find it. Uh, uh, pe uh, Peter likes icons. His first version that had text in there, I found that more descriptive than the different pencils. I have to hoover over it and sometimes I'm using my iPad and hoovering with my iPad is difficult. I can do this but it doesn't work with my iPad so I would like to some, have some text uh, in there. Then you have the translation. There is what they call the magic stick. That was the combination with automatic Google Translate. That doesn't work anymore in, the, in this part because Google had changed this uh, way. It's either we should remove it or we should improve it. Uh, the, the most simple one is get it away because it doesn't work out of the way. Same is true for Translate All. It's all still the DNN module, not the Windows application. I like to have an extension of the uh, search engine sitemap. Um, uh, so we get in the search engine the Google sitemap or the search engine sitemap, we get the entry of the different pages in there automatically as well. It's not that difficult to create if you look at the events module. I think in events it's about 20 lines of code to create a specific sitemap provider uh, and, and you have to specify it in the DNN manifest so it will be inserted in the web.config automatically. But it's, it's not that complicated to do. So Google knows which pages are there in the different languages. And if anybody wants to contribute in there, I would be really happy to help uh, in there. Uh, reference material, you will find it in the slides. I think we are in time, we have 10 minutes left for some questions over there. Uh, the Internet Connector of Community Translations, most of the people here didn't know about that page. Give it a go. If you want to uh, uh, look at the uh, Windows application, uh, DNN Connect is on GitHub, DNN Translator. If you look at the module, I think it's version whatever, you'll find it on GitHub as well. Fork and clone, then start doing your commits, and then create commits to your origin repository, and then create pull requests to the upstream repository, ending up in improvements in this particular repository here. And when you have done that, Peter will generate a new version in time and install it on any kind of dnetconnect.org time available. That's that we have for today with the two of us. Thank you. Because actually, what I what I was what I was working on uh, in, in the last phase uh, was that obviously Web API is going to open up a lot of possibilities for these things to start working more automatically. And um, when I started working on these things, there was still a lot of resistance from certain translators that didn't want anything automatic because uh, I did this translation, so you must see my name when you're installing, etc. And um, now that that is behind me, uh, I, I'm getting more uh, like uh, I was going to say I've lost my patience with that. Actually, I think the user experience should be leading whatever we we do. So uh, I'm looking at how web APIs could fit things together. Specifically, the DNN translator actually now has like you can connect it to the language pack manager. Right, so you can say, well, language pack manager is here, this is my login, and uh, you do your translation, form upload, it's, you know, it's there. Or it creates packs locally that you can upload through the language pack manager. So there's, there's multiple ways to go about it. But 
for me, the, the DNN translator has become the tool for me to translate. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a different audience. Yes. The uh, DNN translator, the Windows application, is easy if you do bigger bulks of translations okay. or your whole module that is English and you want to translate to the French or German or whatever. To, to nav quickly navigate. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. There was to you know, the, the, there's, there's a program called CETA Resource Editor. Yeah. It's nearly yeah. the same, yeah. which is nearly the same, but has a lot of features. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool features there is that you can export a, a file to Excel, mm -hmm. and, and you can give this to any yeah. professional yeah. translator, or whatever. Yeah. He fills out the Excel file, uh, send it back to you. You import it and create the Rise Excel. Okay. Okay. I, I think I think yeah. one of the biggest uh, segment of this solution is um, customers that can monetize their sites to better, and those to me are shops. There are shops that I lost as a you know, from DNN they went to Shopify and people like that. And I could get them back because I could say, hey, Shopify can't do translation. You can't have, to, you've got to have to go to repeat your shop if you're doing it in Dutch, German, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. This solution is much simpler. Uh, have a single site, manage it in a single place, and have your shop content in multiple languages. And they see, you know, result immediately because mm -hmm. that means yeah. they can monitor yeah. the solution much better. And if they can monetize it, they would be uh, happy to invest money in it. Right. And that's that's Spend the kind of people need. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I like Andy's approach uh, in, in the last talk. Customer satisfaction. You need to monetize. Yeah. yeah. And you need to explain to people, hey, it's you profitable this, for you. You're going to increase your revenue. Yeah. And that's really yeah. one of the nice things of, of the way of working that Peter defined is that the text are not text files, RASIX files anymore, but they're just record in a database. Yeah. So if you talk about Excel, we can generate this particular Excel file without any problem based on the data you have. If you get an Excel file back, you can disassemble it and insert it in again because it's, yeah. it's just data yeah. and no text files, XML structured. Yeah. Okay, more questions? If not, thank you very much. Yeah, oh. One question I wanted. Yeah. Okay. It's a good idea to have a, a copy function in your uh, uh, application. Because I, I often use your uh, NL, NL uh, yeah. functions to make a good NL EE version. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I need a copy first before I start. So if, if, if you do the NL version and yeah. we take our NL, NL version as a single base NL version, you could create your NLB version by just specifying the differences. And if you generate your NLB back, it would take 90% of the base NL and add your BE variations in there. So that would be very nice. So we should upload the pack not as NL and L, but we should upload the pack as just NL. And that's the base to start with. That was, that, was, that was the idea. Yeah. Also, you could actually, when you go into the editor, you can say, which version do I want to see on the left yeah. when, I, when I'm translating? And you can choose the NL and L if by accident it's just the NL and L one. And yeah. just copy over English as well. But so you get not only the original English text, but you get also the base NL text, mm -hmm. and you can have your NL BE variations of that, and you only translate the text <coughs> elements that you say, well, our language is better for this particular mm -hmm. part or other, different, different. <laughs> different. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> so the, the idea is you only do the things that are different, it's some kind of object orientation, you take the base class and you only change the things that you want to change in there and the end result is it takes every goods of the, of the base and adds your additional goods to the end and then you generate it by. It's even nice because if you have newer versions it will just reuse all the different text elements, knows which text element has been changed, because the text element has another base English version, and you get proposals, oh, this is, has changed, does your Dutch or your Dutch Belgian version has to be changed as well. So it really helps to manage real bigger text. I don't know if you noticed, there was a field in the text table deprecated in, so as soon as the text of that text has changed or vanished, yeah. then, then, Bon, that record is
at seven, you know, it's six, three, five. Oh, that yeah. was over. Yeah. And now we have this one. Because it knows what original but value uh, was supplied by the original the module developer. Yeah. The, the problem sometimes with translations is also that the uh, developers don't care too much about updating the keys. No. no. They reuse the key reuse for a different text. Keys. But you know, yeah. at the end we can't solve all the problems. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no. But the, the point is, for instance, when you, yeah. when you look at the events module, yeah. you find ResX files with uh, the same word on five or six keys. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they depend. And if, and yeah. Because someone did this and added the key, yeah. and someone wanted this label and added the key. So it would be also helpful to have a tool that tells the developer, hey, look, you have three times the same word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the nice thing, because it's now data. Yeah. All these so things can be generated. You can actually do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're ready. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Thank you.